Welcome everyone to the second video in the Adaptive Cursor Sharing series. Uh, just to reiterate, we've done one video already. I'll put a link in the description below so you can bring yourself up to speed with where we're at. Uh, just to reiterate, this is looking at bind variable peaking, which is the historical view of older versions of the Oracle database leading up to the facilities that we can see in adaptive cursor sharing. So let's just flick through what we covered in the first video so we can get ourselves to a point where we understand what bind variable peaking is. I've created a table called T1 as per the previous video, and I'll skip a couple of steps here, but I'm populating it in exactly the same way and I'm putting an index on and creating some stats as well as a histogram so the optimizer has the best possible data. It's a frequency-based histogram and the distribution of data is as per the previous examples. Row values one to 19 occur exactly once and the value of 20 occurs all the rest of the times, i.e. nearly 500,000 times. If we do a first query now using a bind variable value of 10, we can see that the optimizer gives us the Default costing when no bind variable peaking was in play, that is 25,000 rows or 5% of the data. Once we enabled bind variable peaking, then we got some benefits. If we now set the bind variable to 10 and ask the database to run and optimize that query, we can see this is the value of bind variable peaking. You can see that rather than that default measurement of 25,000, we peaked inside the bind variable to come up with the value and decide yes, Using the histogram, we can see that the correct number of rows was one and the optimizer got it bang on. At this point, you might be thinking, problem solved. Bind variable peaking, it's gonna handle that default costing issue and all our queries are gonna run fine or at least be optimized correctly by the optimizer. But savvy viewers might be thinking, well, let's just take a step back a bit. The objective here was to avoid having every single SQL treated differently. We didn't want to parse every single SQL. To do that, we started using bind variables. And then to avoid the default costing, we started peaking at bind variable values. But if we're peaking at every single value, haven't we just looped around to being looking at every single SQL again? Aren't we just parsing everything again? Well, the answer is no. Once we've peaked at a bind variable value, we don't reparse for different values of the bind variable. And in fact, if we continue our demonstration, we can actually see that in action. You can see on screen there, we've still got that correct costing for the bind variable value of 10. We came up with an estimate of one row. Let's now run a second query, this time using a bind variable value of 20, of which we can see there in the output, there are actually half a million rows in the result. How did the optimizer treat that query? Well, here's where possible issues with bind variable peaking start us to rear its head. Because we've already optimized the query once for the bind variable value of 10, the subsequent executions do not get reparsed. You can see that even though there was half a million rows for the bind variable value of 20, the optimizer still optimized it as if there was only one due to the previous optimization for the bind variable value of 10. And hence, there is the issue here. Now I've got actually a poor plan for the bind variable value of 20. The first person that gets parsed, the first value we peak, is the guy that's going to dominate proceedings, so to speak. He's gonna be the guy that generates the optimizer plan that all subsequent executions will use until that cursor is aged out of the shared pool. In fact, if I flip this example around, I'll flush the shared pool, and this time the first value I'll use is the bind variable value of 20, which will be peaked at. You can see the optimizer now optimizes for the bind variable value of 20. It does a table access full and is assuming that we're going to get approximately half a million rows. When I throw the next execution in with a different bind variable, this time the bind variable value of 10, ideally we know there's only one row coming back, but what has the optimizer done? It is reusing that initial plan it worked out from the first bind variable value that it peaked at. So perhaps bind variable peaking isn't the perfect solution that we actually were planning on getting. In fact, it might have a few shortfalls once we start having skewed data, as you've seen in these examples. That is what motivated the feature called adaptive cursor sharing, the ability to both peak at bind variables, but also avoid these one size fits all plans when the data is not necessarily one size fits all. We'll talk about that in the next video. See you soon.